climate change, deadly earthquakes, a suicide bomber, terrorism, nuclear device in the heart of the nation's capital. It's no wonder that we're pessimistic. It's no wonder that people think that the world is getting worse. But perhaps that's not the case. Perhaps we forget that we've only just begun. Doing what's never been done before is intellectually seductive, whether or not we deem it practical. What we're seeing is unfathomably new possibilities all of a sudden becoming available to us. The future doesn't belong to the faint-hearted. It belongs to the brave. You have to trust in something. Your gut, destiny, life, karma, whatever. We truly are living in an extraordinary time. And many people forget this. So now technically your device is on. <laughs> Can you tell? Can you hear me? <laughs> the yearning to do what we do in the service of something larger than ourselves. Where did we come from? Are we alone in the universe? What is the future of the human race? When you conduct those exercises, innovation follows just as day follows night. We can do this. I know we can because we've done it before. Stay hungry, stay foolish. The future is yours to create. We live in exciting, fast-paced times with many more problems to solve, but many more means than ever of solving them. So the great Ray Kurzweil said um, about 10 years ago that in the next 100 years, so he's talking about your generation, we will experience 20,000 years worth of progress at today's rate. So this exponential growth rate of progress will happen in your lifetime. So the future really is yours to create. So we better be creative. Now, it's creativity in the fields of science, engineering, technology, and mathematics that I'm going to talk to you about today. Creative science? What? Creative mathematics? So those are not two words I ever heard together at school. No one ever told me that physics experiments and fractions in mathematics were a tool for creativity. But in fact, creativity isn't a particular subject at your school. Just because you didn't do art GCSE doesn't mean you aren't a creative person. In fact, <laughs> see, when I was at school, I thought creativity was painting and writing stories and composing music. And weirdly, at school, I thought if you were uh, creative, then you were really good at drawing. That was like, you know, they're really creative. Um, and never once did I feel like fractions, you know, experiments in physics, chemistry, biology. I never felt like these were tools for creativity. They seemed difficult to understand and they didn't really empower me to create anything direct from my imagination. Unlike holding a paintbrush and paints. See, holding a paintbrush and paints just seemed so easy. I could just create, it was, it was seamless. It didn't seem difficult. There weren't rules and stuff to understand. See, I now realize this perception of mathematics and science is entirely wrong. I just wasn't taught that science and mathematics were creative at school. See, a paintbrush and paints, they have rules and techniques that you need to learn in order to unlock the true potential that you hold for them with your imagination. Um, and mathematics and science are the same. There are rules and techniques, of which I'm no doubt you've learned a fair few at school. But also the way you apply those can result in highly creative outcomes as well. And hopefully by the end of this talk, I will start to inspire you to see this. So, hi, I'm Jessie, I am 28 years old, and just like you, I went to school in Bath. And it took me quite a while to figure out what my career should be. So, my job is I'm a designer. I design interactions and experiences. And like a fashion designer innovates with fabric and textiles, I innovate with technology. That's my medium. So I work at the moment in the communications industry, so big advertising communications company, um, which means I get to work on a whole kind of plethora of brands. Um, I also work for some geeks like Will I Am, who appreciate a bit of creative science as well. So my job title is creative technologist. Well, that's what most people call me, which makes sense because I'm creative with technology. Some people also call me a user experience designer because I design the experience of using technology. And other people call me a technology strategist. So I haven't quite found my job title yet, clearly, but one thing I have found is my field. And this was actually the hardest part for me. 
See, um, the field I work in is um, the communications industry, which is, has historically been about one-way communications between brands and consumers through billboards or beautiful print advertising. But actually, this industry is evolving, and actually, this industry is now becoming about two-way communications, which means more than ever before, the communications industry is about designing and making it's about doing things, not saying things. In fact, Felix Baumgartner descending through the atmosphere was probably one of the best examples of a brand actually doing something it's traditionally just been talking about for ages. In this case, the brand was Red Bull. So, one thing I really focus my efforts on um, in this kind of designing and making for the communications industry is the future of the internet. So, most of you probably interact with the internet via a browser on your laptop on your desktop computer at home, and more and more through your phone, through apps and, and browsers on your phone. But actually, this is going to change. And not only are you going to start accessing the computer through these methods that you do, but more and more you're going to start accessing the internet through objects, inanimate things, just stuff that's around. And this, is called, uh, this phenomenon is called the Internet of Things. Um, and it basically means the internet is going to become embedded in loads of stuff. So like things around your classroom and your home that you wouldn't necessarily think could have the internet in. So in fact, this is going to be a huge phenomenon that evolves in your lifetime. In fact, there are going to be 20 billion things connected to the internet in the next eight years, which is astounding, really astounding. And it's the design of this physical interaction with the internet that I spend the majority of my time doing. But one thing is for absolute sure, I had absolutely no idea this existed as a job or even a field when I was at school. See, when I was at school, I studied uh, maths. I was, you know, okay at maths. I understood that how you set out your maths problems in a neat way is seriously the key to solving it. That took me a while to work out, but honestly, it's, it's the top tip. Um, and I was also quite good at art and design. So two kind of polar opposite ends um, as far as the school system was concerned. Um, so it became a bit tricky when I came to A-level. Like, what, what am I going to do? So at A-level, I, before I chose my A-levels, I tried to think about what career I, I might want. Cool. So I thought, right, I'll do one of those simulated careers tests. I don't know if any of you have done one of those. Um, you sit down and you, you answer some of these multiple choice questions and magically it's going to tell you exactly what you should be. Uh, and mine came up with this. Drama teacher or air traffic controller. <laughs> great. They seem kind of polar opposites. Like, oh, it didn't really help, did it? So I was like, okay, great. You know, they can go on my list of possible things I could do. Um, so early on in this big quest to find my career, I thought, okay, what can I be? I know, I know. Because I only really knew these like cliche careers. I mean, they're not cliche careers, but they're just the ones I knew when I was young. So like journalist or doctor or lawyer. So I thought, I know, yeah, doctor, that's it. I used to like, you know, dress up with a stethoscope and a little lab coat when I was a kid. I loved that game Operation. So I thought, Perfect, doctor, that is so what I should do. And it looks so cool on TV, you know, George Clooney in ER. I was like, yeah, that's my job, that's my job, wicked. So, um, great, so I was like, cool, went along to the careers advisor, I was like, I'm gonna be a doctor. And they were like, yeah, medicine, that's brilliant, that is a solid career direction. So I was like, yes. But one thing niggled the whole time, which was that every time I saw a tiny bit of blood, even tiny, and this still happens now, I like faint and go all weak and start collapsing. So very quickly I had to cross doctor off my list of good careers and go on trying to find another one. And actually it was only very recently that I realised um, you can just make up your own career. You don't, you don't have to like fit into one of these careers. You don't just choose a career and put it on like a pair of trousers and off you go into your future. Actually you have to dream it up, you make it up. I am a totally made up career. I had no idea it existed at school. But one thing you do have to do is make sure you do a career that's based on stuff you love at school but also stuff you love outside of school and like where you want to be and like what you really want to do, what's actually important to you. And I only just realised that now, so try and realise that as soon as you can. So are any of you in the audience studying something, a combo of things from the left hand side and the right? So are any of you studying like biology and English or maths and uh, maybe maths and art? Any of you doing a combo? Hands? Am I really the only weirdo? No. Okay, cool. There's loads of you. See? I was just like you. I studied a mix of stuff from the right and stuff from the left. So. I did um, maths and physics and, and design and art. So this meant when I came to apply to university, it was pretty tough. 
So the two kind of courses that stuck out were um, engineering, because that's a you know, good one for your maths and, maths and science, and uh, design, because I loved art and design. And um, it was really difficult because I actually decided to apply for both courses because I couldn't find a degree course that let me combine technical engineering and art. Um, it just, it's weird because at university, when I applied, it seemed that actually engineering and art were always in completely different departments, let alone courses. It seemed like they were two totally polar opposites and that I was absolutely mental to want to do both. Like, what the hell? Like, how could you do both of these things? That's stupid. So I ended up going studying engineering, which was good, and it honed my kind of tech skills. I turned my maths into coding, and I turned my physics into electronics and mechanical engineering. But by the time I'd done four years of engineering, I was pretty darn ready to go and do some art. So I decided to try and apply for jobs that were art and design related. No one wanted to know. They're like, you've just been doing circuit diagrams for four years. No, 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 no way. You don't get to do art. No, 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 you're an engineer. Go and join our like logistics department. So I was like, oh, God. So I tried on a few other careers in my like, classic method, you know, a few, crossed a few more off the list, and um, eventually decided to go back to university and study design. So this time I went to the Royal College of Art, because I was like, right, art, good, I can't go wrong here. And so I study, studied for six years, and I finally got to do both things that I wanted to do. Finally got to study technical engineering and art and design. And in studying these two things together, I actually realized they are an awesome combo and they really complement each other. See, engineering is all about, um, the value is in finding solutions, solution, solution, solution. Whereas in design and art, the value is actually in getting things wrong. So doing something radical, being a bit you know, different, and that's actually what's celebrated. Whereas if you mix up the two, it's actually an incredibly innovative situation to be in. Um, and I think this was something that took, well, it took me six years to realise, but being a hybrid is actually cool, and it's right. It's not wrong. Just because you don't fit in one particular course at university doesn't mean the things you want to study are a bad combination. So, I actually uh, realised this when I was studying design, and I, of course, wasn't the first person to realise this. In fact, I was lucky enough to get a scholarship to study at the Royal College of Art, from Prince Albert, who um, was Queen Victoria's husband, if you, if you know, and he, uh, he did something called the Great Exhibition of 1851. So almost 200 years ago, he fused together engineering and design and, and had one of the most profitable fairs, which was in this amazing building called the Crystal Palace, which actually burnt down. Um, but it was amazing, really, really profitable. Still, the profits today are still funding confused kids like me to go into art school. So there you go, that was a fantastic example of, you know, of the economy making a lot of money off the fusion of engineering and creativity. So I was like, great, cool. And in fact, all of the most exciting work, I would say, happening in the creative industry today is often a, a, a fusion of creativity and mathematics. This is the catwalk at Burberry with exploding holograms. This music video by Arcade Fire, Incredi the whole thing designed through code. In fact, it means each music video, I don't know if any of you have seen it, each music video is completely personalised to you. In fact, I would say some of the most exciting art happening today is actually made through the medium of coding, like this. And textiles that are uh, working with chemistry innovation in order to create this amazing textiles that respond to the environment. Stuff like the Nike Fuel Band, you know, connecting your body with the internet through your phone. Fantastic example of creativity in science. And what about this? Me a feat of mechanical engineering joined with kind of artistic art and design, Thomas Heatherwick's Cauldron at the Olympics, delighted a nation. See, it's kind of adding technology and, and science to something you already know can really make you think about things in a whole entirely different way and really heighten experiences. It can start to really make you redefine what you actually think is even possible, which is such a fantastic gift in order to be creative. So I realised actually I wasn't crazy and looking at projects like this, actually being a fusion of engineering and creativity is spawning some of the world's most important companies today. You know, look at Facebook, look at Amazon, look at Google, and Apple, of course. They're all founded on creativity with science and mathematics and engineering. 
But nobody told me this at school. Absolutely no one mentioned to me this at school. And you might have still experienced this too, which is that you sit in IT class learning Microsoft Word, how to do word art, and it's incredibly boring, and it seems like something you have to learn, and it's just really like, oh. And no one says that, oh my god, this stuff you're doing, computer science, is like one of the most amazing tools for creativity. It isn't kind of left brain, boring, got to learn it. It's actually a really, really amazing tool for right brain creativity. But don't worry, because perhaps some of you are sitting here thinking, OK, I gave up science and maths ages ago. I'm not doing it for A-level. That doesn't matter. That really, really doesn't matter. So you've only got to talk to people that are you know, a few years older than you. See, I'm, I'm 28. I'm not a huge amount older than you. But when I did my homework at school, it was on CD-ROMs. And uh, the library was my uh, you know, place to find answers to questions, if not asking teachers. So you're actually seamlessly using incredibly b complex bits of technology every day as part of your daily life, like waking up in the morning and checking Facebook. You can dream in Facebook because you grew up with it and you understand it better than any other generation. This is really an amazing situation that you're in because you guys are the digital natives. So I would encourage you, even if you aren't particularly good at maths, it doesn't matter. Like lift up the... Um, the cover, you know, it's a, if you're a mechanic, you'd lift up the hood of the car and check out the engine. Do the same for the internet. You know, perhaps some of you are writing blogs. Give, have a go at customizing it. Teach yourself to customize a little bit of the back end code. And quickly you'll understand that this isn't incredibly complicated. And actually, you can do it. You really can. And I would suggest that actually, you know, when you start, you know, when you went to school, learning French was kind of one of the most important languages that you had to learn, and perhaps it was German and Spanish GCSE or whatever. But actually, coding is becoming one of the most important languages to learn too. And even if they're not suggesting to you in maths that you are laying a foundation to be an expert in that language, you are. And you, being a digital native, have got a huge advantage of becoming a major expert in that language. So. Really, the, the, the thing I'm here to tell you is to make. Make, make, make. It's never been easier to make. You can order cheap electronic kits online and get going now. I may have shown you some really massive projects that seem quite difficult to make, but they all started with people that started making stuff in a small way. I mean, Tom, Thomas Heatherwick started his creativity through making cards. You know, it's, it's really, you, you start small and get bigger. And you really do have the most incredible resource at your fingertips, which like me and no one else had, had at your age, which is this thing, the search bar. I can't do it is just seriously not an excuse anymore because absolutely everything you need to know is right here. You're connected to billions of people just through typing in here. It's absolutely amazing. So really, you do have the resources to make anything you want. So, no pressure, but the future is yours to create. <laughs>